match the title at all. We'll get to the main event in a moment. This is kind of until folks show up. But um, I just realized I never, never actually showed uh, how this uh, this can function on this thing. So recently, there's, uh, this is kind of just like a brief announcement kind of thing. Uh, recently, there have been a bunch of strides in terms of uh, uh, N64 emulation on the Vita. Now, obviously, it's not working just yet. <laughs> but just so you know, uh, there's improvements. It isn't a giant, like, rainbow-colored mess anymore. And uh, it's actually seemingly on their list of, uh, of stuff that they've actually been looking at, weirdly enough. Um, actually, as I saw that it got even uh, got mentioned as being tested in the notes, which hasn't happened in forever. So uh, who knows? Maybe all that pestering finally got something done. Um, but yeah, uh, it's kind of graphically buggy. If it, I'm mostly testing this because previously it would just crash on the intro as soon as you get into a fight. So I'm kind of curious to see if it'll get there. Uh, we're still waiting for folks to show up anyway. Uh, as you can see, none of the actual models are rendering properly. Um, it runs slow as sin, <laughs> and, you know, eventually it'll get there. Apparently there's a lot of weird effects that OB64 tried to pull off. Um, didn't quite necessarily succeed in a lot of those. Oh dear god, what is going on? <laughs> okay, that's uh, a little bit off. Might be slightly ugly looking. <laughs> so yeah, not exactly what I'd call playable as of yet. But we'll, uh, again, we're going back to Marshall Black Queen in a moment here. Um, I just want to see if it still crashes. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, this was originally going to be a Legend of Mana day, but, uh, uh didn't end up happening. Um, kind of wound up taking a whole lot longer than I thought to clean, uh, clean some cast iron, uh, cook cooking stuff there, so. So there's that. Also, we're just going to go with the first answers that come to mind here. I mean, on the plus side, at least it's showing text boxes this time around. It's progress. Um, previously, it used to just be a green background with some, like, rainbow-colored splotches where the statue should be. So that's something. Um, usually the uh, the shadows could just turn into a black square and just stretch across infinity. So, again, it's something. Also, I'm not going to do it this time around, but you can absolutely answer these questions to make Magnus sound like an absolute perv, so that's always fun. Um... Uh, I don't know, I was just like starting the game off that way. It just feels like it just feels like a massively uh, massively douchey Magnus is I don't know, the most fun play of B64. At least I just find that it's uh, it's amusing. But I always, I always love this question system. It's a nice way of giving you a not quite randomizer, but it's not quite the same every time. It's something that uh, the PSP version really sorely lacked and something that uh, has actually been discussed recently. Uh, in terms of potentially finding a way to finally bring the system back into that game for one vision. So that'd be uh, that'd be fun if that ends up happening. Uh, so yeah, we're still recording off the Vita. Still got my janky hand problems. It's probably going to continue for, at the very minimum, another couple weeks. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get into a doctor's office these days. Let's skip the intro here. Is it going to crash on the first battle? That's what I want to know. Will you crash? Because it's usually, like, overworld encounters of Crash it before. Yes, yes, yes. Casting their... It's it's a really awkward name for the intro. Let's not even get ourselves there. I'm amazed that it hasn't crashed yet. I mean, so, as far as previous crashes that this had, dependent on your settings, sometimes it would crash straight on the intro. Um, sometimes it'll crash on launch, which that one's actually audio-related. So if you end up tr giving this a try, yeah, audio crashes it every time. Sometimes it would crash in this cutscene. Previously, uh, Mr. Dude Guy here, Mr. Mustachio, would end up stretching himself across the screen. Um, a bit of a side note, it's interesting how with uh, with 64 and Night Lotus, they seem to have gotten together in terms of agreeing on a uniform castle design for everywhere. wonder what that's about. But either way, can't skip this cutscene. Oh, wait, what did I just... Oh, okay. Apparently that is the go back to emulation menu thing, and also funnily enough, I thought that uh, it, it has this little system for for using the mouse and whatever else. I thought um, its original system here of using the stick was way too sensitive and was kind of annoyed by it. Turns out, yeah, you can just use the touch screen. Uh, but yeah, before the folks that just showed up report it for being the wrong game, I know we're just showing off uh, 64 
emulation at the moment. We'll get to the actual challenge uh, pretty soon here. Since uh, time ran a little bit shorter than expected, so we'll do the whole weird Legend of Mana run tomorrow. Which, funnily enough, was inspired uh, by just being way too into March of the Black Queen lately. Such things happen. I don't know why, I've just been on a... just kind of a kick lately of just Ogre Battle and, uh, and Legend of Mana. I think I'm mildly, uh, mildly burnt out on, uh, on Lucked and all that kind of business in, kind of in the last couple weeks, just, uh, putting together all the AI teams. I don't know what I was thinking with that project. It's kind of a terrible idea, but screw it. It's progressing along. We'll, like, it'll be fun when it's done. All these shadow mannequin people are <laughs> gonna march right on out of there. Uh, I love this intro, but man, emulation for the N64 is a bit jank. Alright, so this was another one of the ones that could crash, and it seems like we're still getting the blocky door situation going on. Um, those th Okay, so the table and the screen previously used to be completely different. Okay, and we're already coming in out of a block square. That's, uh, that's nice. If it manages to get to the fight with Dio, it's already a big step forward. <laughs> Although, yeah, a bit of a step backward in terms of these uh, boxes here. I wonder if... let's see here. I wonder if I'm going over to V-Sync. Well, let's sort that problem out. I don't know why it would, but I'm just going over settings that have changed since last time. And texture caching, that's fine. Let's see, set all this mess up too fast. <laughs> uh, well, and not good there. Let's see, what about this? If I enable high level emulation, what will I do? No idea. I honestly don't know what a lot of this stuff does. But that's fine. It'll happen as it'll happen. And so then Dio will come in for his obligatory old fart line. <laughs> it's interesting how they've used different fire effects everywhere, by the way. Like, the, the fire effects in the previous map were fine. Uh, the fire effects on this particular screen are not, and I guess it should, should, should say screen, not map. Ranger Diomedes! He doesn't like the majesticness of his name. Alright, let's see, what else can we change here? Oh! Uh, I guess we don't want to continue that one, and oh my god, it's exploded! Okay, well, let's screw that, let's get back. <laughs> Let's get on to, to this thing. This run is going to be a terrible idea. <laughs> and yeah, using the soundtrack for this version. Which is funny, because this is also the perfect version for a no-pause run, because it's really just the best way to actually play the PS1 version. For all of its other improvements, for whatever reason, the uh, the pause menu also pauses the music. Couldn't tell you why. <laughs> now, I haven't really... For March of the Black Queen, I don't like writing it out. Like, it's one of those ones I like to have a general idea of what we're going for, but... Like, in terms of knowing what the leader is here. What was the name from, uh, we'll just call him Crank, you know what? <laughs> it's fine. That's basically the idea we're going for here. They can't use any items. They're not gonna get into, uh... Wait, not Krang? It's supposed to be Crank. That movie was fun. I don't remember how they justified reassembling him back from pieces. Uh... Let's we'll go with Lady Crank this time. I, I don't know, I prefer, prefer the, uh, the female protagonist for this one. As metal as the uh, the male dude is, let's see. Uh, we'll say barely any in this case. I forgot what the question was. It's fine. <laughs> see, if you could only save one person from the flames, who would it be? Oh my God, always got to go with your kid. 
I don't know who would say that they're a decrepit parent, but okay. Um, personal luck. Funnily enough, I think this actually raises your luck, so we're just gonna go with that. Um, I don't know the exact effects of all these cards, just to be clear. Man, can you create a potion? What do you create? Uh, probably whiskey. Um, <laughs> I'll go with the wealth, why not? I'm sure they'd be very grateful for that. How you create a wealth potion? I don't know. Well, I guess, then again, creating liquor. I'm sure that your knights disdain from this disgraceful behavior. Um, be excellent, my dudes! As you do. Like, I just love the, uh, the performance differences, the, uh, the improved textures, everything about the PS1 version. What do you lack? Um, efficiency. For sure. <laughs> Let's see. Choose a tarot card from the deck, and looking away. So I usually prefer to pick these, I was just picking my random. It's always weird looking at speedruns of this, and they're like, oh, you know, here, we figured out all these exact things. You gotta be here in this frame, you gotta be doing this stuff over here. It's weird how Warren has these bizarre baby hands going on there. Oh well. Alright, so which protagonist did we get? Okay, we got the Thunder Flare. Interestingly, by the way, uh, I don't know if this happened in the SNES version too, but in the PS1 version, uh, the look of your character will actually change based on their element. Um, I don't know if it's exactly based on element or if it's just on a different leader type. But like, for example, I have the, uh, the Ice Field one uh, for my other run. And, um, and yeah, long story short, they're, uh, they're blue. They're blue and they seem to use the Ice brand. And yeah, I recently lost all my saves for this one, but I oh will. You can always do more, considering how many saves I actually have laying around for, this, for all these games. Honestly, I don't know uh, why I even bother keeping them around, because it's not like I really go back to them for anything other than, uh, than luck. But okay, first fight, let's do this. <laughs> okay, it's 25 years ago, there was a war, you know the deal. Now, there's an item that you can get. Uh, because this is a no item, no equip kind of situation, uh, we're not going to be going for that. We're just going to be going over here. Uh, so there's an item on the island. I believe there's an item in the mountains as well. Now, uh, we're going to be going for capturing basically every town, uh, trying to speedrun this as much as possible, more or less. Um, again, don't have a particular route in mind. We're just going to play this by ear, however it ends up going. Sorry for the kind of flickering on the right. I'm not really sure what that's about. Got a Hermit, Intelligence 2 points up, and it was already up at 60, so this character's pretty darn solid. Shall we repeat it? No! Now we go get lands, because we gotta. And he's also a free unit. Now, part of the Iron Man stipulation for this whole thing, if a and part of the no heal stipulation for this, if a character goes down, they are dead. They are just deleted on the spot. Now, occasionally I will make use of the Replenish command. Bear in mind that this does not bring a character back to life. In some cases, it may be the same type of character. Um, but basically, it's just you hire a new recruit. Okay, pull the Sun card. That's actually really handy in this case, because then we don't have to take our first income. As weird as that sounds, that's a good thing. Alright. Thank you. Seems like I'm getting a little bit of input delay here. Um, hopefully we don't get a reputation down card here. If we get a rep up, that'll basically be a perfect uh, Warren Castle, as far as I'm concerned. I should probably mention at any given point that I don't know all of the ins and outs of this game, but, you know, it's fine. Now, should I set this to max speed? Yeah, probably. No, didn't mean to pause there. Where's my, my max speed? There we go. That's probably where we're getting some input delay. So we're going to do this as max speed as well. Liberation. We draw a thing. Okay. A little bit of extra health never hurts. Perfect. 
Found the Dragon's Claw. Well, that's a shame. We'll never be able to use that. Nope. Stop repeating things! No. Oh, why is it paused? If it randomly pauses because I'm mashing triangle, that doesn't count. <laughs> Apparently that is a thing that can happen. Alright, so. Nice thing about not taking our first income. Generally, your first one is more or less free, but I believe you get extra reputation if you beat it in under a day. Now, with all of the extra strength and stuff, or all the extra ints and stuff like that, pretty sure we should be solid here. Um, as far as the caster ones, they're generally not preferred as far as runs go. Uh, simply, uh, simply put, they uh, well, they're not going to be as bulky. They're not going to do as much overall damage and all that kind of thing. But yeah, we should be good here. Usually the one that they recommend is the uh, the three attack uh, frontliner guy. You're basically getting one of your best melee units right off the bat that way. Um, otherwise, you're stuck with your main character more or less being a upgraded version of the doll wizard, which, meh. Whatever. I prefer them. To each their own. I mean, I personally prefer the one that shoots ghosts, because it looks cool. Oh yeah, I believe you get extra bonus money if you complete this early. 625 seems about normal. Okay, we might have just lost out on money, but we might get a little bit of extra reputation. Because of the way that we're doing this, there's a very high probability of losing towns. Please don't save over my other file. That is my casual run. The casual no heal run, as you do. Just got past uh, Deneb in that one. And I'm just feeling this game lately. Love the little snow effect that goes on in this version. Again, I just love the PS1 version. It's, it's so nice. So, so nice. Alright, so let's look at what kind of characters we got. We got Casty folks, got Warren with his two dogs. They've been the MVP in my other run here. Um, I don't know why I'm doing it like this, because we're going to have to redo some formations here. First of all, what are y'all thinking? I mean, that formation's acceptable at least. I'm not going to uh, go full min-max on everything. You know what? That one's acceptable enough. This one's just no. Protect your leader. Now, it's funny because even though the AI has a lot of formations where, for example, they'll uh, they'll leave their leader completely exposed, that's actually a good thing for them. As weird as that sounds. Uh, basically, what that translates to is, yes, you can take out their leader on accident even, but that also means that they retreat and get three units. So, you know... Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and take our leader squad here. We're going to remove... Actually, we're going to... No. We're going to remove you. Remove you. And then we're going to add a griffin. Because you start off with two griffins every time. Typically, the one on the right is stronger. I couldn't tell you why. Um, but yeah. Uh, this time around... This one's a little bit more accurate, so we're just going to go there. So that'll be fine. All right now for our other griffin. Let's see, we got a Valk over here with a cleric. Oh, that shouldn't be here. Get that cleric out of here. Also, funnily enough, uh, doing a no heal run bizarrely makes you appreciate Amazons. Um, but okay. See, I'm not sure if they have high agility growth or something like that, but I've been, been getting some good results out of them in my other run. Alright, what else do we want to do here? See if there's any non maxed out parties right now. Because for some reason, your starting squads do leave slots empty sometimes. Nobody can become a leader there. We're just fine. I'm gonna save it there. I don't know why, because again, it's an Iron Man run. Wherever this run ends, it ends. This is gonna be one of those ones that I expect to have to attempt multiple times. As you do. I 
And yeah, when it says items, um, that does apply to both items and equipment. Alright, we'll go ahead and just send the lands probably out here. We're going to want a staging area for that front bit. Uh, Warren's pretty good up front. Um, he's usually pretty good at dealing a bunch of damage really quick, so we'll send him to take magic setting up here. Uh, Vader here. I think we'll send him up here as well. Uh, Slender, good defensive team. Send you up here. <laughs> Got another Hendrickson in my, uh, my other run here as well. Now we're going to leave Leader Squad sitting and defending the main base here. So as far as lose conditions go, um, it would we'd basically only lose if we lose our leader or we run out of money and lose our leader. So, um, unlike OB64, we can technically accept a loss of, uh, uh te technically accept a loss in retreat status. But yeah. Um, you don't get the money back for that. Alright, luck is up. Man, we've been getting nothing but positive cards. This is weird. Oh, by the way, I can't use cards either. I should probably have mentioned that as well. I mean, obviously they're an item. Alright, do we know where they're attacking yet? And Charisma's up. Seriously, what is going on here? Why is this so lucky? <laughs> yeah, for some reason that causes the pause menu to up here. I suppose it's fair. You know, you're just mashing through it. <laughs> all right, so it looks like they're gonna try and take the middle. Nope, didn't mean to. Instinct and all that. All right. So first order of business. I gotta get this Hendrickson team up a little bit. I wanna get them to about there. They're gonna be fighting on one or two, so nobody's really got much of an advantage. Uh, these guys are sitting here because they'll eventually circle around to take the front. Um, that guy's probably going to take a loss eventually. He's there to try to wear him down for uh, the actual city team to be able to do a little bit better. Um, and everyone's going to be switched over to strong here. Because it's just going to be better. Uh, it doesn't actually say to uh, say that it's going to be a stronger attack, though it is. I, I think they get like a 15% attack bonus or something like that, but the stipulation is that they will always attack the strongest unit in the enemy team. But, if you want to get a ton of experience for everybody, you know, you just have them always do that. Uh, sometimes you want to have them take out uh, enemy leaders, but for the purposes of this, and when I was testing out what seemed to work best for this, just keeping everybody on strong all the time seemed to be the best option. And there was pretty much never a time that I would want to scare off a leader, because they could just simply win, and then would usually uh, get a elimination on the follow-up. So, that's all well and fine. Alright, Hendrickson's doing okay. Worst case scenario, we'll have him retreat. No big whoop. Again, anybody that dies is just permadead. And since I feel like I gotta bring this up every time, the whole reason that we're not using in-game sound is because it's off of a Vita, and we cannot do that. Well, we can, but it sounds disgusting, and just, no. Alright. Uh, he's in a little bit of a risky spot. I think they can still push this through. If we end up losing some soldiers early on, we do have replacements. Um, yeah, the, he's targeting the back ones anyway. Uh, each of these will have different AI tendencies, so if they end up... You know, just kind of depending on how everything goes, uh, it may be sensible to not retreat. Um, in this case, I really wish that I could push them up, but we're going to have you go back. Thankfully it automatically slows down time for, for the purposes of that right there. So they're gonna have to take one fight, they're probably gonna have to retreat. We'll see. Okay, that's an already injured team, they can win this. Now I feel like Amazons must have gotten buffed uh, in the PS1 version. I just don't remember them being nearly as viable in the original. Like, they still suck compared to everybody else, and it's mostly because they're a strength class that doesn't really gain strength. They gain a bunch of agility, they're functionally Knight of Lotus Archers, they're just kind of, you know, 
they're a plinky unit that's relatively reliable in terms of damage. Once you get them decent, uh, they're actually they, they're pretty workable. A little bit surprised that these guys haven't gotten a level yet. That's okay, they're retreating back to town, and... Hold on, getting a phone call. Alrighty, and phone call over. Hi there, Mr. Vale. See Hendrickson's units. Finish moving feels like a tombstone engraving. Has finally fought it out. He pulled his last card, and it was his own. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so how's it going? How's it going? Yeah, originally this was going to be uh, was going to be Legend of Mana Dollmaster run, but yeah, 
uh, kind of took a little bit too long cleaning some, uh, some cast iron pot things. So, <laughs> I, I want to take my time with that run. It's going to take absolutely ages because the very start of it, you kind of deal with uh, using a pet rabbi to actually get through <laughs> until you can get some casting stuff. Because the original, like the, the main stuff, the main three instruments you find at the first store are garbage. So, there's that. But anyhow, anyhow. So yeah, I didn't mean to pause it there. So yeah, currently we are doing the second map. Uh, we ended up getting the Thunder Flare main character. Um, currently got some rookies doing their job pretty well. And, uh, oh man, I should have re relocated that wizard. That's why I didn't have a, a, uh, an extra team to throw out there. So in testing, this run seemed to evolve, or not evolve, but revolve a lot around letting them actually retreat a whole bunch. And then just sort of soft grinding for, uh, for experience as they're ping-ponging back and forth. Uh, ah, crap, there's the Death Guard. That's one of the two that I was worried about, but it's fine. Blah. So yeah, no cards, no items, no equips. Any character that dies is permadead. And, uh... Yeah. It's good stuff. A little bit of a uh, chaotic run. And this little starter doll wizard is the uh, the one that... that I uh, want to model that run after. You can use a pet, you can use your magical stuff. Yes, uh, Mr. Vale suggested it, but dang it, I've been, uh, been really feeling that run because of that guy. And uh, earlier on we were actually showing off how far uh, emulation for uh, N64 on the Vita's come. I mean, it technically runs. It technically runs. Kind of made it crash by trying to turn on uh, anti-aliasing. Uh, but hey, you know what? It made it to, uh, to almost the first fight, which is a far cry better than it did before, so that's something. And yeah, you can bet as soon as that's actually functioning properly, we're gonna we're gonna do a lot more of those runs. I forgot to set the rest of these guys to uh, to strong, by the way, and that's why they're not doing so good. Not that this guy whacking him with his stick is gonna do terribly well. If anybody else gets uh, my stick uh, stuck in their head from that, maybe I wouldn't be the only weird one. This is this bad lip reading of uh, uh, was it Last Jedi? I think it was just uh, just a Yoda song called My Stick. It's just him sticking him, him song ah, singing about his walking stick. Good God, my brain's busted. <laughs> <laughs> let Hendrickson recover there a little bit. Um, the reason the leader squad's there up in the middle, I don't want them getting too much experience or taking on too many fights. Um, they're basically going to be there as a flanker. Um, I want to have a good four or five like flying teams just going around. Um, ideally three for the most part. Um, most of the teams are going to be sitting trying to hunker down in cities and holding them because that is our only form of, of uh, recovery whatsoever. Uh, just uh, kind of replenishing in towns. And yes, a stick wizard managed to actually get a kill for once. It's like some sort of bizarre miracle. Um, yes, yeah, so you'll, you'll be noticing in some cases we'll be sending people out to bar towns just for the purposes of having them hold uh, for a little bit. So, uh, Actually, I shouldn't have moved him. But yeah, the, the purposes of the flying units, like right now we have two of them. Uh, but their main purpose is just, like, you have a bunch of units hunkering down in cities, you have your flying units go in, weaken them uh, down a whole bunch, and then retreat um, as soon as they're about to start losing units. And in some cases, yeah, they might end up getting shot down, in which case, yeah, we only have access to so many flying units, we're gonna try to preserve them as much as possible. Um, now for anyone unfamiliar with the mechanics of this game, depending on what, uh, what units you have leading that particular squad, you can replenish at different towns. Which, funnily enough, yeah, this, like many, well, hell, like all of the Ogre Battle games, does have a mode where if you want to play Iron Man, you can totally play Iron Man. Um, in which, yeah, uh, it has a mode to replenish with, based off their class. So, for example, if the Dull Wizard here were to lose some of his teammates, uh, he would be able to replenish them with, uh, uh, with golems and stuff like that. Um, I, they can usually recruit basic soldiers and then something else. It's like mermaids will always be able to recruit mermaids, he would be able to recruit golems, wizards, I believe can 
I want to say they can do, like, soldiers or something. Like, I think they can recruit any class that's under them. Man, Stick Wizard. <laughs> this guy, this is Wizard Wallace from... He, like, he, a after this, he just went off to go uh, go join the Palestinian government in OB-64. Like, he was the guy with the stick pulling a uh, William Wallace sun hill there. <laughs> uh, stick Wizard does not take anyone's crap. <laughs> Uh. All right, good. We'll go ahead and target him. Her arrow should do nothing against that golem. Uh, golems do a whole lot better if they're in a doll wizard's uh, team here. Uh, I think they get like a 10, 20 something percent buff. Why they don't take that leg shackle off minute is anyone's guess. Seems like it would make him a lot more effective by taking that thing off. But hey, he's there to be a brick wall and to get three punches. I don't remember if they get three punches in the original. Like, Golems and, uh, and Cerberus? Found buried treasure! Find out! Okay. Found Ring of Magic, well, that'd be good, but unfortunately, yeah, no. But yeah, you may notice in a lot of cases we end up just sending somebody out, and then the only time they can actually retreat, because I can't get the cursor on them, is to just give them the order to retreat and then pick them up and drag them back from there. It's an interesting complication of this run. Um, so far, though, there's very little that can actually do much against us in this particular map. Um, especially since these guys have leveled up a little bit, so they're just going to be utterly dominating for a little bit here. Of course I say that, and that's when they probably all just get wrecked, but hey. Um, and as weird as it sounds, yes, I do want to see leader units taken out on accident so that they go backwards, we get more experience out of them, that sort of thing. Alright, you get one more punch, and he can't hit worth the crap, that's fine. That's fine, they took out the leader. Alright, you can go ahead and go up here. As you may have definitely guessed, the controls are going to be a little bit janky. Um, now yeah, Warren is going to be one of our big frontliners up until we get uh, Gilbert. That dude can wreck. We got a second flying unit here, can have them go take out this one. Land doesn't really need experience right now. Um, we don't need to do too much uh, capturing and holding here in this first, or technically second map. But yeah, like, the, this team right here gets uh, a total of eight attacks, so they're gonna wreck pretty good. He hits pretty hard, the wolves hit pretty hard. Especially if you get any level bonus whatsoever, the wolves will just tear into anything. I'm just gonna call them wolves instead of Cerberi or Cerberus or whatever you want to call them. The hell doggos. Kaboom. And I think this is why Warren gets used in a lot of uh, a lot of speedruns. The dude can dominate pretty good. And uh, also, the, like these teams right here, uh, both uh, both Gilbert and Warren tend to snowball pretty well because you can set up situations like this where there's enemy uh, teams of uh, only two, and they can usually just one round them. So that's handy. All right, for the moment, let's have you head this way. Right, we've got one Valkyrie team moving up there. I'd like to have one of the teams moving up to take Lanza spot. Actually, we don't have to take Lanza spot. Uh, the temples are basically just a free card draw. Uh, for all intents and purposes. As far as putting the Griffin off in the back there, this Windstorm is their most valuable thing as far as I'm concerned. They can make it fly, they can do a big AoE. It's not super impressive by itself, but it's enough to usually do more damage overall. So it basically guarantees a win, even if it doesn't necessarily take out units. So uh, the way that uh, winning or losing works in this one, uh, if you end up uh, just doing a higher number of damage overall, regardless of how effective it actually was, like say you've got a character with a friggin' thousand health or something like that, and you get hit for 200, and you almost entirely wipe another team uh, doing uh, like 198 damage there, despite the fact that they lost most of their team, if, technically speaking, they would have done more damage. How you got a character with a thousand health, I don't know. Probably cheating, but the point is, if they did if they did a technically higher number regardless of anything, and disregarding cards, that's how winning happens. Alright, they're gonna heal. Now, I think it's 10%, uh, 10 experience per um, uh, per encounter. Unless they win, then it's a experience based on level. 
I'm not sure. moved up here. Is this up of tea? Oh, I mean, clearly. What else would it be? I mean, can't you tell? This is totally a Wegraph over here. He's just shooting out lightning bolts everywhere. Wegraph was a Valkyrie the whole time, confirmed. Even though that's a Dollmaster, but hush. <laughs> you saw nothing. See, didn't we see we're already at uh, Ravane's? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was totally defended by Griffins. This is just the uh, the hidden hard mode nobody talks about. I mean, don't do you remember the bit about FFT where an old man has his dogs go and eat a bunch of birds out of this guy? Classic, everyone remembers that part. And the one where Spears shot lightning. And where three people could essentially clown car act their way on top of a grip to fly around the map. It's the best way to get hover. Oh yeah, and you can't forget the bit like where you could just go and buy some termites and use them to destroy a castle wall. That, that's how they did it, too. I mean, they couldn't get out of that vampire room, you know, kind of towards the end there. They didn't really know what to do about Zalbag, so like, you know what, let's just, uh, shove some termites on these brick walls. That'll make them disappear. We're getting Orlando this run? Um, I mean, funnily enough, kind of. <laughs> I kind of feel like Debonair is the original Orlando. <laughs> He's just way more fabulous about it. <laughs> I mean, he is the first in the genre to shoot sword lasers, to be fair. <laughs> so there's that. The FFT would have been a lot better with Griffins or Griffacobos. I have a feeling that the Chocobos were their attempts at putting in Griffins. What do you guys think? Because they do a lot of like they do a lot of really similar things, and you can ride them around. And they do appear in a lot of similar uh, formations, too. Never played any of the Tactic Soakers? I mean, it's basically FFT, except you have like four or five maps happening at once. <laughs> that's, that's more or less Tactic Soaker. Or, in reality, it's more like they took Tactic Soaker and they're like, what if we took a quarter of this map and just made it its own level? <laughs> and again, sorry for occasional accidental pauses. That, like, a lot of buttons pause for some reason. Are there Keller Seagulls in FFT? Uh, yes. Yes, there are. Kind of. They're like pelicans. Sort of. They're like vulture pelicans. And they live in the desert. Trench on a Tactic Sogar? Yeah, I mean, it started off as... Funnily enough, Tactic Sogar was a spin-off of this game, and then... It was like, this was basically... Like, Matsuno kind of did the same thing that uh, Miyazaki did for Dark Souls, where they're like, okay, I remember all of these fairy tales as a kid, and I'm also, like, a crazy stoner with a weird imagination. L let me just make this game based off of game shows and whatever's going on through my crazy mind right now. And so that's what they did. And so they came up with this thing, billing itself as the ultimate, you know, fantasy game or whatever else. And it's basically, like, a tabletop war game, except it's, you know, like this. Just like it, it, essentially, it's just video gaming, war gaming, except it's fantasy. So, um, you know, kind of the Warcraft thing. Kind of, it wanted to be an RTS, but it didn't know what RTSs were because they didn't exist yet, kind of thing. Okay, they probably did, but general idea still remains. All right. Um, yeah, now is the point when they start getting super aggressive about taking back Magic Town again, as they do. Thank you, Slow, for the follow. Uh, and bear in mind, again, this is not the usual music for this game. Again, we're recording off of a Vita right now because my hand is busted, and it's the only thing I can realistically use without it getting all irritated. So, yeah. Um, there's that. Uh, also, these guys are definitely getting pushed back. I uh, shouldn't be using Stick Wizard here. Um, normally, we'd have access to cards and things like that, and good lord, his health is low. I need to get these guys out of here. 
Yeah, um, and I'll basically be able to get that mess into a doctor in about a couple weeks or sooner. Because apparently there's 10 billion steps to actually get this thing done. Um, but anyway, so like I was saying, uh, you had Ogre Battle here. You know, it wanted to be a war game D&D, more or less. And that's why the entire game is like based off your reputation and how locals are judging you and how you're handling the war and all that kind of thing. Um, not as much as there's still here and there. True. It's a really fun one to speedrun. And a really fun one to challenge run. I really like doing SCCs a little while back. Um, you ever tried Cerebo's mod, by the way? Because, man, that that's a pretty dang good mod. It's like, basically, the entire purpose of that thing was to... Guess you have? Okay, well, hell, I don't need to explain Jack. You know how good it is. <laughs> uh, love recommending that one. And yes, we will finish the monster onto that at some point. I swear, I haven't forgotten about it. It's just a matter of eventually getting there. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it was this game, and the whole idea of this one is, yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 I won't skip all this. No, hit triangle, it'll auto-pause, sorry. Um, I just want to skip out of that dialogue. So, you know, the ravens commit to cannibalism. Hi, Annihilator. <laughs> nice to see you, too, and honestly, I'm not surprised. Fish do, too. Uh, we left uh, on a little bit of a trip for the weekend, and uh, yeah, our fish kind of ate one of them. Uh, they had enough food. They seemingly still had food on the ground, but they're like, man, our friend look, sure looks tasty, though. <laughs> See, it does take inspiration from 1.2 outside of level skilling. I believe they actually uh, they used a lot of the same like little side mods to slap it together, but then they wanted to create something that was more similar in feel. Oh man, this witch squad is wrecking us here, though. Uh, so yeah, for, for anyone unfamiliar, the witches in this one, they don't really attack. Their whole thing is they just more or less have like a 50-50 chance to stun the entire team. Um, which basically takes away one of their actions. And in this case, yeah, they're... Okay, they finally got pushed back. Uh, but they kept taking wins and wins and wins, and I need my leader squad out here. Oh. Let me select them, and this is why you make them a flyer. Because they're going to have better stats in general, but you just bring them in when you need something to fly in there and just wreck faces. But, but again, the, this, this game's whole coolness is just the fact that you can... God, I don't even know how to describe this properly. Everything interacts in a cool way. Like right here, having a griffin in the team means the entire team's just gonna be riding this griffin and fighting off the back of it. If this griffin were to get shot down right now, this entire team would be dead. Also, I don't know why I didn't put the griffin in the back, that's where he should be. I need to adjust their formation after this. But, like, yeah, if, if that griffin were to be removed from the team, they would fall into the drink and die instantly. And uh, there's actually a map later on. Uh, actually, no, they wouldn't die in this case. Uh, actually, wait, not like that. I need you in the back doing your casting. You in the nice, safe middle area here. You're in the front defending these two, and you're over there boosting the griffin. I'm gonna put brightness out so my phone battery dies. Yes. That's how brightness works. Oh, no wonder they're doing crappy. Be strong! There we go. And again, the melee one may be technically stronger. But dang it, I just love my AoE caster leader. So yeah, every time that you go through this game, like, everything will be different. The questions that you do at the very start will, uh... It will essentially determine what kind of leader you get, what kind of stuff you uh, start with, your entire starting roster. Um, and then from there, you're basically you're starting off with a neutral reputation, and then depending on whether you go like good or evil, or technically chaotic or lawful, um, stuff will adjust the way that locals react to you, whether they'll help you, whether they'll give you items, whether they'll just straight up turn on you. All of that stuff will end up changing. Um, every city's uh, kind of... Uh, Tendencies will depend on how your reputation goes up and down over time as well. Like, there's just, there's so much stuff. Uh, and hi there, Vantos. How's it going? Also, let me uh, do a quick little in-battle thing here, because I need to turn the music back anymore. Gotta play the SNES version if you want to play this. Dude, no. I love the PS1 version. What are you talking about? PS1 or nothing. <laughs> uh, 
No, seriously, unironically, this is my favorite version. <laughs> yes, the music is jacked up, I will say. I, like, I think the music is better, but the fact that it pauses if you use the pause menu, and you typically want to use the pause menu a whole bunch, um, you like because it looks better? It does look better. Everything about it is just better, in my opinion. All right, uh, Hendrickson, what are you doing not healing? You go over here. Um, so now this version is harder? Really? I don't know. That would seem about the same to me. I know that the formations are different in this one. Like, for example, I know that uh, Debonair's team is a decent bit stronger, so I don't know what the issue there is exactly. But anyway, at this point, yeah, we just pile on on their team, because it's looking more and more like they've got... they're completely wiped. Um... <laughs> And funnily enough, this is the, your first introduction. I don't know if this was in the SNES version, but that's your first introduction to them pulling the surprise yes or no, because that will just straight up instantly delete units later on. <laughs> Where they're just like, hey, would you like to defect for no reason? Yes, okay, thank you. And then, unfortunately, they don't actually switch sides. That would have been really cool, because my first time through, my uh, I, my main attack team, that it was like a princess and a lich. Or no, 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 it was the lich and four fairies, because uh, it was the fairy-only run. Uh, he, friggin' Black Queen stole my, uh, stole my lich. It's <laughs> like, man, if they turn that against us, we're screwed. Alright, I don't want the dog to get eaten, so we're gonna retreat them out of there. Um. Alright, got her, got her income. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you know if this Nez version is actually harder, then we'll, we'll do it that way. Um, I, again, the PS1 version is way more responsive. So, one way or another, I would still want to do this one for this version. Because as much as I, again, as much as I love the Snaz one, the fact that this one has unique portraits and the fact that it's way snappier in terms of actually responding to your inputs, that just does it for me. The little visual changes are nice. Again, it's the unique uh, unique looks that really stand out to me, but... Uh, yeah. It's like the, the Snaz jank is... It's going to be for all Snaz games. Like, some of them are specifically made to be snappy, some of them are just going to slow down, and I believe this should be the win here. Uh, dog should have one more attack. Uh, if you could not kill off Warren, that'd be fantastic. Come on, doggos. Doggo Force is apparently really unreliable. Okay, fantastic. Fine, fine. You just survive then. Alright, see if the Valk team can take it. Still kind of disappointed I didn't start off with a Swordmaster. Another one of those classes that usually gets doo dooed on, but I kind of like it. Um, if you set them to strong and set them to do their little laser sword beam thing, they're actually pretty strong. But uh, you gotta you gotta work them up a little bit. You gotta keep them fighting. All right, three health. Come on, come on. But yeah, the little uh, camera moving back and forth also makes it feel nice. There we go. Basic Soldier takes him out, and we're good here. Level up? Yes. Good, good, good. I feel like you got way faster level ups in the SNES version, though. I'm not sure if anyone else can confirm that. I think I need to get the leader involved in a few more fights for this next bit. So hear me out. Remake of FFT that makes it into a Tactics Ogre sequel. Uh... What? I mean, isn't that basically Tactics Ogre PSP? Oh, I forgot to redo. Nah, whatever. Fine, fine, fine. We're just gonna move on here. Got to redo part of it. Okay, so yeah, Sharam Dix District. Uh, this is where you get Knopus. Kind of boss. Also, funnily enough, this is where I got the Ogre Blade in my first time through. Friggin' endgame Mega Sword. <laughs> of ultimate evilness. Alright, um, so realistically, that forward team is going to get pushed back, so we're going to send 
three teams uh, to go defend this uh, this front city. Um, going to dispatch and then cancel to have a secondary team defending the home base here. Now we're going to send one here uh, to go collect some loot that we probably will never be able to use. Um, if any of them have an item that's like a plot item or something like that, um, I forgot to mention earlier, but uh, technically every time that you play through the game, everything is randomized. So all of your item placements, all of your equipment, everything. Now again, we can't use items or equipment, but if there are plot items, it's something. Now, the way they want to handle this map typically, um, just deploy everyone immediately. Again, we're minus one team for now. Uh, but basically, you want to send everybody out to go pick a few strongholds here. Judgment is good. Get some, uh, get some extra health on them. Um, but yeah, you, you keep some uh, some strongholds. Lightning orb. Cool. Out of curiosity, I don't think I ever got the item. The lightning orb is that. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. That's nothing. Good luck with your AFKing. Got a hermit. Good. More int. Uh, sure. <laughs> Alright, if you could stop throwing my view around everywhere, that'd be fantastic. Draw a deck, and reputation meter's down. That's a problem. It's an annoying problem. Will I keep this card? No. This is yes. So, alright, sun card. Um, I like sun cards again because it resets the income timer. Alright, we're gonna send Crank out to do a little bit of harassment. Also, the PS1 version comes with a true overhead map if you want it. I prefer the, uh, the angled view myself. But it's there if you really want to see exactly where everybody is. Oh yeah, so I was going into how exactly this game ended up becoming an FFT, kind of. Because <laughs> yeah, it was basically this, and then apparently their mentality was, you know what, we want to have this game and going into the whole role-playing aspect and everything else, but we want to get down into the nitty-gritty individual unit level. Because in this case, it's more like the way that the whole struggle kind of adapts to the utter chaos of a war and all that kind of thing. Um... So in this case, it's like, how are the towns and different factions reacting? And then it goes to Tactics Ogre, which is like, how are the individual units uh, handling everything? And, you know, they added true permadeath in that one, that if you lose a unit, they're just dead completely. You start off with one, basically, mulligan to bring them back to life and all that kind of thing. But in general, yeah, permadeath, and permadeath going on there. And, um... And yeah, it, it did a pretty good job. The writing's pretty dang solid. The story still adjusts, but it's not as extreme in this one. I think we have like 20 endings or something in this one. Um, up to and including the quote-unquote Saint King having you assassinated in the ending. It's a... Uh, yeah, I think that one's like if you go through all the trouble to save Tristan and most of the, you know, Zenobian higher-ups and whatever else. But then you also are just... I, I think it's like if you have a neutral, uh, neutral reputation but you piss off certain people, and he's just like, okay, this guy's gonna be more trouble than they're worth, they want the war, but, uh, hey, Lanz, how about you go ahead and kill him? So yeah, Lanz has to be alive for that one as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright, Hendrickson is gonna take over that charge. Usually this first charge doesn't go so well. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe they're gonna go all the way here. If they actually manage to capture that town, I'll be surprised. Because usually you don't even want to go for that first capture, because it can be so weak by the time they get there that once you reinforcements show up, they can't hold it. And you end up losing a lot of reputation if you end up losing any town that you hold. So you got to get it right the first time. Because once your reputation starts to slip, it's, uh, it's definitely possible to get back, but it's a bit troubling. 
Um, what do you guys think, by the way? Are we going for uh, recruiting Deneb in this one, or execution time? By the way, they, they don't really, despite the cartoony look, they really do no qualms about it. They're like, yeah, no, they, they're actually dead. <laughs> uh, if you if you find an item, they're like, you found this item on the corpse. <laughs> they don't really beat around the bush on that one. All right, will they be able to take all these on? Because I'm worried if I retreat one and the other one captures it, then we got to hold out. Uh, they actually can pull this off. Interesting. This does not go this way ever. <laughs> uh, whatever. He's re if they get to the town, that soldier guy is replaceable. All right, now he's more valuable. Let me select him, please. So the reason that the pause menu is handy is because it allows you to change formations between battles. Uh, in this case, that is not an option, and in this case, they're also going to retreat because I don't want to lose that guy now that they've leveled up. Let's see what Lance's unit does. See if they can push through. I think they're still at better health right now. Uh, no, they're not. They're pretty beat up. Uh, they've got two casters. They should be able to. Yeah. Heavy guy should only attack Lance or his helper. They should be able to take the hit. Caster guy did his attack here. He's just going to keep missing. Uh... Okay. Not ideal. Still survivable. Alright, if one of them hits... Come on. You douche. Oh, come on! How do you all miss the guy? Okay, yeah, they're gonna have to retreat. So close, too. Although, if they retreat, if they don't stop to rest in the town, I could probably send the leader squad up there. Just wipe it all. Some accuracy you got there. And it seems like they're going for the strong approach here. Yeah, that's why these guys aren't winning. They're... He's dead. Alright, that squad, it, I might as well just let them stick it out. They're leaderless, uh, so they're getting disbanded immediately after this fight. So, first casualty of the run. Not even a level up out of it. Uh, what do you guys think, by the way, for a for the, for the purposes of taking out a unit that just died, I, I think it's going to be okay to use the pause menu. Otherwise, I'm just going to forget who, uh, who made it or who didn't. And actually, one quick pause here. Or not technically a pause, but just uh, one quick second here. Be right back.
Okay, and back. Sorry for the pause. Let's move on. So, what was Warren up to here? And yeah, haven't had a think about it. I think, uh, I think yeah, for the purposes of removing a unit, what are, uh, we're just gonna be okay taking a pause for the purposes of that. Because otherwise we're gonna wind up with back-to-back -back fights, and then I won't know who to delete, and yeah. That'll be a whole thing. Perfect. Also, conveniently, that leader guy is probably going to go ahead and uh, send himself back forward. So, alright, let's go ahead and erase. Weird, okay. Uh, can I change one of these to the leader? No. Alright, so he's gonna have to go back and get deleted. Although it's weird, I could have sworn that you would be able to delete them and then it would instantly get rid of the unit. Perfect. Ish. to have Crank's team try to go for a big sweep here. Now we're gonna have to have Hendrickson run back this way. Over the bigger treat. Now we're gonna have that Valk go take the town on the left once their big push is done here. Uh, so basically they will split all their armies between different teams, different, or different towns uh, that can potentially be taken. Uh, they'll keep repeatedly trying to take those different towns regardless of how many units they actually have guarding them. Um, so, in this particular case, it makes more sense... Ah, termites. Nice. Uh, it makes uh, sense to have them just kind of, uh, kind of going towards one particular area. We can deal with them in a little funnel-type situation here. As soon as we take that town on the left, it'll start off the Canopus side quest thingy, uh, in which case we have to go through several different locations, and we're going to want a flyer to go clear across the map in order to be able to find his sister. It's kind of odd that his sister is... Uh, it, one of the few characters in the series that's kind of implicitly sexualized, yet surprisingly comes out of a convent. <laughs> I never really thought about it until this last run. Like, uh, odd. Apparently Matsuno was super into nuns or something. <laughs> like, oh man, sure wish those nuns were half naked and could fly. <laughs> Whatever does it for you, man. Whatever does it for you. So we're going to play it a little bit risky trying to take this town here. I usually don't want to stretch it this far, but I think they can do it. Especially since since, eh, since they've only realistically got two attacking units. Down to one now. Um, if we can get out of this without getting stunned, then we can win it. Yeah, nice. Okay. That's just going to be a complete wipe then. More than likely. Perfect. The only game where a... Naked man with a whip uh, takes out a uh, barely dressed witch. It's a weird time. Alright, let's go ahead and put you here. And now at this point we want to relieve some of the pressure there, so we're going to want to take that town on the left. Alright, pull the magician. Good. Yes, yes, yes. So now we want Canopus. So, want a little lead over here. Go ahead and uh, take that town. Alright, Mr. Hendrickson, you head over this way. Keep this place defended. Meanwhile, Steven's team here. Start heading in this direction. Let's kind of head towards the bridge for now. Uh, we don't really need to keep that temple defended anymore, so we'll be moving them down next. Again, the AI can technically... Oh, what's this? They can't take temples, they won't go out of their way to, though. And bear back again.
Hello there. And, uh, yes, hi, Atlas. Uh, I was on the phone, actually. You showed up the second that I muted it. <laughs> it happens. We keep this card? No. Oh, crap. So, yeah, basically, no matter what you tell him, his dialogue just changes. Uh, so we're going to leave her there. Ah, why say sorry? It's all good. It was just funny timing. Well, thanks for the follow, Isaac Newton. <laughs> like your name? Alright. Thankfully, they rolled some pretty weak ninjas here, so that's pretty good. Is this a mod that makes it harder? Uh, no. Uh, basically, this is a just a challenge mode, and this is the PSX version. Uh, basically, the PSX version does some rebalancing, uh, but... Uh, Oh wait, didn't mean to do that. Let's go over to this one. Here, I'll explain in just a sec, because I'm basically trying to play this in real time is the, is the difference. Usually, you just go to the pause menu and uh, just send everybody out where they need to go. Unfortunately, in this case, it's sending me around everywhere. Uh, but yeah, that, the main difference between this NES and PS exports, uh, the PS1 version has better, better graphics, better music, and all that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it, it's meant to be a hard mode. It's kind of like playing FTL, no pause, it's the same general idea. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's going to be no pause, no items, no equipment, no chariots. Uh, and also Iron Man, so if any character dies, they're just deleted. I want to see if I can pull this off. This is kind of the first uh, trial run of the thing. I did a little bit of uh, initial routing and all that. Um, I can't say I'm some master of the game or whatever, but I just really want to try it this way. Seemed pretty dang fun from what I've tried of it so far. Alright, so far I think they're going to be able to hold. If they take one more encounter, they should be able to just wipe instantly. Um, uh, da, 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 da. But yeah, there, there's some bug fixes, there's some... Uh, there's a lot of graphical changes, like unique units actually having unique sprites. Uh, the, uh, the music, while better, for some reason has this weird thing where it pauses in whenever you hit the pause menu, which seems like a no-duh kind of thing, but it feels really weird when uh, when the music's constantly restarting. So that's the one negative I can say about the game. Uh, there's technically a little bit of a load with each fight. I don't know why some people reported that they're getting 8 second load times. It makes no sense, because I've, like, as you can see, it's... Okay, I don't know why I paused there. Um, some menus, if you cancel out of them, it auto-pauses. I'm not counting that. Because uh, I don't really know the exact context uh, that makes that happen. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's a lot of graphical differences. There's a camera that moves around. The sprite work is better. Uh, the map work is better. The uh, There's a better overhead map. There's uh, it, there's a lot better responsiveness out of, out of the controls, which is the main reason I want to do, do this version. Um, uh, it, it does change a few things, like the whole golem... Uh, Let's see, golems can't upgrade in their tree. I think that one's fixed, and that guy's dead. Um, that one's fixed, and uh, let's see, cockatrices are rebalanced. Uh, so actually, some would say cockatrices are made useless. Considering how good a cockatrice is, I don't know. Personally, I find find them to still be scary. So I would say they did an okay job rebalancing those. Now, I will say, like I was mentioning earlier... Um, Pause will be acceptable in one instance, and that is to delete units that die. And or if it's on accident. Alright, so they technically took a loss. Uh, we'll just go ahead and pull them back to get reinforcements. Um, the replenish command is allowed. No real sense in blocking that. Um, if I take that guy off the home base, they're probably just going to charge in there. Also, the AI in this version is better. I probably should have mentioned that as well. Um... I've been told that the SNES version is harder. I disagree. This version just has better AI because they don't fly around like gnats to try to get somewhere. They actually will try to take undefended areas and all that kind of thing. So yeah, um, let's see. I wanted to replay this since I've been since forever. So thanks for doing this. Also, sorry I missed you mentioning everything alright with the arm. Um, currently, still TBH on that one. I had uh, I had testing done. Uh, basically, they confirmed carpal tunnel and all that kind of thing. Uh, still stuck wearing a brace for the time being. Uh, basically going to be a while until I can get to the doctor. Um, it's going to be about two weeks, give or take, until they can do the consultation, and then I don't know how long until, uh, 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 how long after that to get it all actually sorted out. Uh, let's just zoom out here. I think we can finish uh, defending this town here. 
start massing up a little bit down here. I meant to move that guy a while ago. I was surprised that they actually haven't branched some units off to go take on that Valkyrie there. Um, I need to move my leader off of that uh, tile as soon as possible, though. Because I need to need to get to uh, get access to that in order to get to the next part of the quest line, I think. But yeah, uh, there's. I mean, people have different opinions on which version they prefer. I really strongly prefer this one, and at least part of that is is bias based off of playing off of Vita for the most part. Which Retro Arc, if you've used Retro Arc on Vita, you know what I'm talking about. That occasionally. If, there, if there's a crash or something like that, if you don't have it settings set right, you may lose some progress. I've had that happen a few times. Never had that happen with the PS1 version. It's more a situational thing, but yeah, I, I, it's specifically the unique units looking unique. Um, the differences to the music, especially the little bell sound uh, to, uh, to your main battle theme there. Um, and the fact that it's so much snappier than it does it for me. So yeah, the N64 is the better Ogre Battle, as I love the way the mechanics are there. Yes, and at the start of this, I was showing off that uh, it technically does run on Vita at this point. Uh, you can't get it to run, uh, it's just very janky. <laughs> as in, like, all the people are weird shadow people, some of the props are just either white blobs or black squares. Um, the text boxes, for whatever reason, are crunched down to like an eighth of their size. <laughs> It's super weird. Let's see, did you intentionally get the Thunder Leader when you answered the questions? Uh, no. I wasn't going for anyone in particular. Oh, there we go. We got the info on Yulia thanks to Lenz, who came in for the assist, because he's about to get overwhelmed here. Um, but yeah, no, I prefer going with utter randomness in this game. Even if there's, even if there's a condition where I can know when stuff's coming up. Well, Chaos Frame, where are you going? Uh, gonna try to go for, uh, for Lawful if possible, but it, whatever. If, if stuff goes downhill, it goes downhill. Um, I was trying to take a vote earlier over whether anyone wants to see Deneb. See if we can still pull out a, a decent Chaos Frame while, uh, while using Deneb. <laughs> uh, that's up to you guys. Um, I forget exactly where you're supposed to... I, I think you get the Golden Bow, like, two maps away from her? I will say I'm super unfamiliar with the side quests in this one, but I love I just love playing it and just seeing what happens. Because I remember they're trying to get the nab and then recovering the cast frame is quite a crappy thing to do. Uh, yep, that's that's the fun stuff. But we're doing these maps so fast that we're usually not even a day into the map uh, before we uh, before we get through it. Did you get a crown yet? Um, not yet, though. Funnily enough, in my other run, I did. Um. But yeah, uh, bear in mind that does count as an item usage, so cannot get the princess. Your princess is in another playthrough. <laughs> Alright, yeah, these guys' power is very front-loaded. Get a friggin' princess and lich on this team and they're unstoppable, but uh... Yeah. Man, this dude's beef, holy crap! Uh, or they've gotten crazy over-leveled. Um, no liches either. Yeah, no, no liches, no princesses, no, no uh, special classes, no were tigers or freaking werewolves or any of that. I guess the nav's best use is uh, Valkyrie Muse. But witches, though, man. Actually, yeah, come to think of it, I think we will go for Deneb because I want to have a want to have a pink Valkyrie. Again, one of the little details that make me love the PS1 version that you have your unique classes looking unique. Like, if I made lands into a Berserker, he'd be a red Berserker. So your best casters will be him using Dullmaster. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it just caps out there. Alright, let's send, uh, send lands out here. Yeah, and again, at, as far as the AI goes, they don't just, like, randomly scatter their units in the PS1 version. They will mass, and they will charge at a particular destination. It may not necessarily always be the best one, but they're going to try. We're the top tier dragons. Oh yeah, no, we get nothing. <laughs> we're running, like, crap generics in real time. That's We're just going to make this work. Realistically, I expect this to fail several times. But I really, 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 really want to try it this way. 
It's like the ultimate in generic technology. It's like more generic than uh, Sam's Club brand or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Somehow they're still winning through here. And a lot of the team compositions I'll be using are really just going to be going for the purposes of area control, just going for technical wins and stuff like that. So decent amounts of AoE and stuff like that once we can get to it. Having color sprites for the heroes is the best thing, so much more flavor. Exactly! Feels nice. Feels good. Eh, I don't really know what the difference is in formations, like as far as enemy formations go. Again, Debonair was the, the first time that I noticed. So I don't know. If anyone has more info on that, feel free to share. It's like the, that's the nice thing about Ogre Battle, though. It's it's so random that it's something different every time. All right, I think uh, they're in good enough condition to go here. Uh, bear in mind, we're also playing this on max speed, <laughs> just to add more to it. Lightning! Yeah, I love this combo, though. It's like, as far as leaders go, yeah, the three attack one's pretty nice. But it's just fun to have uh, have these teams that go in where they just throw out all these AoEs at the very start of the fight, finish off weaker units, all that kind of good stuff. So does anyone here have any particular favorite maps from the game? Like any ones that you just love to do every time? Yeah, in some cases I can't even go and catch another unit before another fight breaks out. Trying to do emergency adjustments is going to be a hell of a thing. <laughs> But that's okay. Doing better than the first time around. Only taking a couple casualties so far. And both of them were pretty much intentional. Take that city. So, I think it's a... Oh, nice. Another end bonus. Hi there, Mr. Cow. Hey, how's it going? It's a program for us where we make sure all units have enough alignment to upgrade. <laughs> Fair. Let's see, there's, there's a really... There's a Yuli over there! Okay, so. I think we've cleared the map at this point. Mr. James, go ahead and uh, guard this town. Valkyrie, that got no training, you go ahead and go over here. And hopefully this town actually drops a sun card. That would be pretty nice. Are you going to get there before dawn? Yes. Come on, draw a sun card. A sun or an empress would be nice. You dick. <laughs> Get off my reputation meter cards. Sister of Cannabis. Again, flying naked nun. <laughs> Save those two? Yeah, sure. The Wings of Victory. Kind of misunderstood it the first time around as she just snapped off her wings. Like, here you go. Go bring these to my brother. Tell him to stop being a dick. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go back there. Can probably start massing units. You all healed up? Good. So his sister said so, so now he's all happy to join the rebellion. Now, I don't believe you have to deploy him, but I do plan to have him as part of my A-team here. Eh, we took an income, that's not great. Not necessarily a bad thing either. I mean, we'll take hidden treasures if we find them, silver TR, I believe that's just an equip. Yes, okay, we know about the Wind Rider, he already joined us. By the way, Mr. Cow, uh, did the thingamajig arrive by chance? Because I believe it should have gotten there by now. I actually sent another box to my brother around the same time. With similar contents. Of technological goodness. 
And they already got theirs. I think I should probably check. Alright, deploy unit. Vader! Oh wait, right, I need to go get rid of Vader. Oh yeah, man, what is wrong with your postal service? Also, let's see if there's any units that can promote. Got any promotions on hand? Yeah, what can you be? Can you be a knight? You can be a knight! Ooh, you can be a doll mage too, actually. That'd be fantastic. All the AoE. Alright. Change this into two fighters and three wizards. We'll adjust their formation in a moment. I don't like this formation at all. I don't like having the leaders up front like that, but oh well. So Gilbert's team can take quite a lot of punishment. Um, I basically will have enough time for Canopus to get here, and then it's time for everyone to charge in. In fact, yeah, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. And that should be enough oomph to make this happen. And despite what he says, uh, he will like even if you get uh, Canopus there first, uh, he's still gonna fight you. Um, there's some slightly different dialogue in that case. Oh crap, I mixed this up. Alright, retreat and reform then. Grabbing Gilbert? Yep. So basically going to do a situation here where this team will go and wear them down to next to nothing. Again, they recover pretty quick, so just make it work. So they'll go and send all those AoEs out there. I guess it's not going to be next to nothing like I'd hoped. That's fine, they still do a decent chunk. Go for best, go for strong. I should have adjusted this, actually. Uh, go for leader. Leader uh, will make them focus fire on one guy, but it reduces their attack. And in this case, uh, I'd prefer to... Ah, jeez, they can't even reach him half the time. Yeah, they need a better formation. The, the one they start with is exactly opposite of what it should be. Because Thunder Arrow isn't particularly good, them hitting from back isn't very good. And the fact that you've got an AoE character in the front attacking instead of, you know, doing something useful. Like, I don't know, throwing tornadoes at people is a bit of a thing. Alright. So they're all doing their thing. Make this formation not trash, please. And we can try something like this. Canopa sucks as a leader, but excels as a skirmisher. That he does. Also, hi there, Evan. How's it going? I'm gonna leave him. Uh, li ah, 
I left Knopus in the back road to uh, hopefully get a little oomph out of him, just because I think technically Gilbert here is slightly weaker to casters. We'll see. It was also slightly a misclick. So one of those two things will be accurate. But yeah, no, as soon as the crank team gets here, they're they're just gonna wipe. Um, can't say experience is being handed out as well as I'd like. I was really hoping for that Valkyrie team to get a bit more experience. Uh, they tend to fall behind the wayside. Like I, I, again, it would be by the wayside, but I feel like they do fall behind the wayside even uh, pretty quick. They fall into that dumpster real good. <laughs> Alright. Iron Sword Wizards and Warriors 2 played on the Nez. I forget if that's on the chip, by the way. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, can't use can't use tarot. I just love how with these games there's so many mechanics that you have to lay out an entire pile of uh of uh disclusions and stuff like that. Alright. What are you gonna do? Ah, I went for the went for the dragon. Or the worm. The infinitely regenerating worms, mind you. Still a worm. If these both hit. Come on. Gotta be joking me. Really? Alright, I want her to get the win though. <laughs> Oh crap, that wasn't supposed to be paused. Eh, again, accidental pauses don't count. I'm trying not to pause as much as I can. This game just pauses sometimes. Pow. And there we go. Now we're good. Now are you leveling up? No. Still refusing to level up? Fine. This little dialogue just cracks me up. Wait, don't kill the guy. He totally didn't want to be a bad guy. Why don't we listen to him? And then he joins us as one of the best early game offensive units in the game. Because <laughs> it comes with uh, two trained up worms and uh, kind of buffs him himself. It's like basically a semi truck worth of damage. Because usually they can do 30 to 40 each. Plus they get two attacks, plus he gets his attacks on top of that. Not as potentially OP as Warren can get, but still. Uh, also, he's a flying unit. Alright, let me see if I have enough time for another one of these. So say it's successful, if I randomly disappear, that means time ran out. Alright. So next we got uh, Jancia, or we got Pogrom. We're not doing Pogrom yet. <laughs> um, also, we're redoing some of these teams. So we got to hand out some promotions first of all. Um, let's see, we got our nine teams, so it would be, good, uh, would be a good idea to get a backup here. Uh, we can make a new team, though. Where's my buttons? Here we go. There we got a Beastmaster with a dog and an octopus. Uh, I'm not sure if either of those are really worth going for. See, it's just a deep... I don't know, octopi kind of suck really deep, but that is the thing. So I, th I think we're going to go... Yeah, we'll go for something like this. It's not super amazing, but it's more attacks, and quite frankly, water maps are few and far between. Eh. Alright, so this is a, a lot of folks' uh, favorite from first start in the game, I think. The werewolf map. However, first order of business, we got to get that music back on. Apparently the soundtrack is not terribly long that we gotta start it up twice in one run. Alright, 
Alright, so we're going to want this one to sweep. They're going to kind of hop around the side here. Alright, we're going to get lands taking this town. Basically, the, the front of the, the start of this fight is going to be one big defense. I want Warren crunching down on some uh, random units over here. Yeah, Pogrom is basically a noob trap, by the way, if you're wondering why that one wasn't taken. It's basically zombies and stuff everywhere, and you need clerics to get through that. Clerics will insta-kill zombies, everything else just fights them infinitely. And uh, we have no units that can actually kill undead units. Thankfully, none of them can be a leader, so they don't technically have to be beaten. Send our untested noob squad over here. Send, actually, you go nowhere. And then we can't deploy Canopus. That's fine. So we go spread all over this map. This map will be ours. And in fact, I think I want to move Steve around the side. Not Steve. I'm used to calling them Steve because that was the first time around. There we go. Two points on the reputation meter. By the way, that is a score of 100. <laughs> Alright, I was hoping to stop them. Unfortunately, yeah, in a lot of cases I won't be able to stop units once their orders are given. <laughs> Alright, full card. Luck is one point up. Okay, they're just going to have to hold that town now. And like they're saying here... There's totally a werewolf in the castle, and then it's funny because he starts the werewolf leader himself, just shows up in a bunch of different towns somehow. Ah, one point down, get out of here. Eh, I'm gonna keep the card? No. Basically saying he's capturing all the lady types and eating them, more or less. Uh, seems like a very specific diet, but whatever. The strength card, lands is stronger, as if he wasn't strong before. Keep this card? No. See, there's the dude. I heard you're really bugging the Empire. Good for you, but there's some good people. <laughs> the guy who rules this great place is a really great guy. Take it easy, they're not that bad. <laughs> you should totally go there at night. It's a one credit clear tag. Uh, Iron Man. Basically, if it's game over, the save's deleted. And anyone that dies is permanently deleted. Yeah, this guy, seriously, this guy's one of my favorites in March of Black Queen. <laughs> Uh, it's just so goofy. He just goes and hides among his populace. Like, oh man, this leader is such a good guy. He totally doesn't eat people. It's great. And yeah, they've got Stick Wizard as well. Fortunately, it's uh, dusk time, so they're going to start whopping out some serious damage here. Shame you can't recruit him, right? <laughs> Apparently, you can recruit his equivalent in uh, OB64, though. I forget the guy's name. Um, I'm sure Mr. Vale knows. He's here. But, uh... Okay, yeah, we are getting rocked real hard here. I think they've already used all their attacks, so... I'm just gonna hope that they have and try to get the rest of our attacks in and see if we win this. Ben? Uh, doesn't sound right. I'm not sure. Alright, Vader, you need to back the hell off and go here. Because they're gonna get wiped. Uh, Sirius is equivalent. Whatever the werewolf guy is in um, OB64. The one that you can recruit. So there's two ways to get were werewolves in this map, but they ain't him. Yeah, you gotta get the items, which again means we can't get werewolves in this either. Bisky! There we go. Bisky the Biscuitinator. The Biscuitinator! Again, I want to do more OB64 runs. There's so many different runs I want to do with that one. It's just... N64 emulation is so friggin' specific that I want to be able to do it off this thing. Don't have to get items. Wait, really? I'd like to have some werewolves then. <laughs> uh, remind me. You can run into them as free guys, you can run. Aw, oh, dude! Uh, right, we gotta get some neutrals going then. Machine the Hawkman, okay. Sheen. 
and a Sheen in the Night Sky. Karth is a Black Knight. That, I think Karth is the Lotus Commander, isn't he? Back moan, Doll Wizard, do your thing. Make the wipe. God, this team is so swimming in AoEs. Yeah, I really like this setup. Alright, they're gonna retreat, that's fantastic. Get some level ups out of it. In a, lot, in a lot of cases, this capture and hold stuff is gonna be our best way forward. And it looks like we're accidentally gonna get an elimination on him. Perfect. I posted a picture of this earlier, but I got a really good encircle mint on this map uh, when I was doing the other run. And, <laughs> and you, you, like, if you get a good... Oh no, they killed the doggo! No! They're about to kill our archer back there. That's alright, that one's gone. Oh my goodness, guys, please hit this dude. He's such a chump. Alright, I need to get them over to a town so that he can recruit a new dog. Because basically, hellhounds just kind of live here. Um, right, I'm going to send Lens back to do a little bit of ping pong defense here. Um, I'm fairly confident in these guys being able to hold. Uh, let's see. Belk Squad can also head over this way. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna comb the map for neutrals. Also, a uh, little bit of a failure on a previous thing that I had tried, um, but uh, that whole idea of uh, going for entirely single unit uh, type of runs uh, without any leaders or any of that, while the starting squads can be done that way, um, unfortunately there was a bit of a situation where it turns out that yeah, that any leader type that you convert into a unit that they shouldn't technically be, for whatever man whatever reason manifests itself as a impossibly high cost uh, deployment squad that doesn't actually lose so it's technically a, a thing they can't ever lose you just sort of soft block um yeah uh <laughs> that whole uh, mermaid only run led to some interesting discoveries yeah this guy's gonna have to hold like crazy um even if they end up having to sacrifice some units uh they're kind of our only our only line here. Uh, they should be able to still keep winning, though. I think they can hold. Uh, for later maps, I'm definitely going to have to have more than one unit defending so they can retreat if need be. But for the early game, we've got replacements. Uh, just because they have a numerical advantage and a caster, they'll be able to do at least some defense here. Also, on a bit of a side note, I don't know uh, if anyone else has also been looking for different kinds of work they can do from home. But uh, we have been going through uh, in Indeed and all that, because like I go in there the other day to go check if they've got any new types of jobs or whatever. Like remote jobs and things like that. And, uh, and sure enough, like, it's like 9,300 jobs on there. It's so like, okay, that, you know, that looks good. Oh, they can get a Hellhound, nice. Um... Anywho, so, so yeah, I was going through all of that, all that stuff. And for the weirdest things started just suddenly popping up in terms of recommendations. of like, oh yeah, you applied for this data entry job, or this editing job, or... You know, applied for uh, for going and helping people with their online marketing or whatever. Like, how would you also think about this idea to go be a sous chef at a restaurant? Like, that that sounds like 100% the opposite of what I was looking for, but thank you for saying it. Like, I literally don't even have anything related to it on my resume on there. Because it's like, all kinds of different business stuff and business management and, and administration kind of stuff and data entry and just any kind of software related thing I could find that was relevant. But yeah, sure enough. Apparently they want me to go be an assistant chef. <laughs> sure. I mean, my wife makes fun of me for burning half the stuff that I make, but 
if you say so. <laughs> ah, crap. I need to get lands moving again. They just barely lost that one. But yeah, I'd like to, to see about recruiting werewolves here if we can find a few. Wouldn't say no to that. Indeed, as the weirdest matching. Very true. Alright, come on, Hendrick Squad. You're basically only line of defense. As another soldier loses himself. Got sent an underwear welding job in Louisiana, or underwater welding job in Louisiana with my web program recipe. <laughs> wow. So, like, I could understand one that came in yesterday that, uh, that was asking for administrative help in terms of, um, uh, what's it? In terms of election type stuff. But still. Alright, we're gonna buy a dog. Yeah, like right now I'm looking at it and they're like, would you, would you like to go volunteer at a Lutheran church? Like, I'm not a Lutheran. I'm really not looking for volunteering much of anything right now. Why would you send me this? Now, I wonder if we should test the theory from before that uh, Ace Combat music goes with everything. some uh, ace combat to this. Oh crap, didn't mean to do that. Well, whoops. I was trying to tell them to make sure that they were on the strong setting. That's fine. Let's see. What? Whatever. Uh, it's, it's hilarious. It actually asked me to approve that one. <laughs> uh, isn't that basically what marriage is? No. Um. Now, personally, I think this music's still way better than the SNES version. Like, it's all bleepy and whatever else. There's another random soldier bites the dust. Dang it! Dudes, stop dying! Also, they probably wouldn't have died if I hadn't accidentally retreated there. And again, acceptable pause to delete a dude. Stop sending them up against giants unless they're named David. No. Man, they're gonna get their experience one way or another. Plus, not to mention, most of these, like, rando soldier units are just meat. <laughs> uh, as long as the special units are getting trained up, I'm right. Because I know we're gonna get way more units than we know how to deal with pretty soon here. Alright. They did their business, they can retreat there. Uh, they can take over defending the castle for now. Unfortunately, yeah, we're gonna constantly get stuck in these situations where I can't send in reinforcements. So that's why we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, taking and holding. Gonna have to have some pretty versatile teams. Made to be in your army. Yeah. Should have seen the X Division run. I mean, these guys are getting it quick and easy. They're not getting hit by flamethrowers for half an hour and then pasted across a wall.
Alright, sounds good. At least one elimination going on. This land is just sitting there in the middle of a field. Where the hell is my backup? Alright, I need to get Gilbert in there. And how an alley works in this? I mean, AI? Bit of a troubled spot, but I need to roll the dice here to see if they can just win this. Oh, get out of here with their dodges. Alright, come on. He can't do anything more, he's done. Oh, alignment? Gotcha. I mean, it depends. It's a little weird to get used to. Also, this guy has dodged six attacks in a row. Thank you. <laughs> Hear a wizard in the back finally hitting the guy sitting out in the open. Yeah, it's an acquired taste for sure. Uh, no. Don't move her back just yet. I need... Ah, uh, James, whatever. You're not Gilbert. Where the hell's Gilbert during all this mosh pit of nonsense? Because he's the one I needed most for all this. Alright, we're going to send him up here. I think, generally speaking, it ends up working subtly enough that, it, like, after a little while, as long as your run's going okay, it doesn't matter nearly as much as it seems like it should. Alright. Don't die. Survive. Come on, come on, come on. Scare your attacks on. As long as they get one attack round of fireballs, they can win it. Alright, there we go. Lance just uh, lost Lyman because he killed a priest that's defending a monster that kidnaps and eats little girls. Well, such is life. But yeah, he seriously needs to back off for the time being, though. Dude's been carrying this fight like crazy. Alright, let's see. My goodness. These guys just don't seem to understand. I had applied for this job a little bit ago for um, for being an like, unlicensed salesperson kind of thing. Because they had a thing they were advertising for it. They have sent me the licensed application multiple times and I keep sending back to them like, well, I don't, I don't have a sales license, I just have a background in sales. So I'm like, no, no, we need an insurance thing for this one. But we have another one that doesn't need one. We'll, we'll totally send that to you right now, and then three attempts later, they still haven't. Are you a pogrom? No. I'm not doing pogrom yet. <laughs> I'm getting at least a little bit stronger until we get to pogrom. We're doing werewolf town. Now... One thing I can't help but notice, no time playing through this game have I ever seen units named either Gildas or uh, Murden. So I don't know where exactly they got those names for um, uh, for Lance's backup. Because they're like they're never anywhere else. It, it's basically implied. It, the whole team that shows up in, um, in Lucked is implied to be from this game. And it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be Warren, uh, Canopus, um, uh, lands and then two knights because it's you know it's one of the better squads that you can use in this one. It's all good there. Yeah, I mean if you have clerics, pogrom would definitely definitely make sense to do first. Um, I can't use clerics, can't use items, can't use cards, can't use equipment, um, can't use the pause menu, and everyone dies if they go down. So, yeah. Yeah, roll at the dice there, but he made it. Alright, lands, please get in this town. Yeah, the, the way that I like to look at it, let's 
Priestess, Slime is 1.0, neato. Alright, so let's see You guys look cool! No, really. <laughs> have a message on this from the ruler. He's impressed with his strength and asking if you'd like to join. What do you think? Nah. Uh, you're stubborn. Okay, I get it. Do whatever you want. Like, he, he, it's funny, he just pretends to be just a chill dude hanging out. I love it. <laughs> I just love that shtick so much. Yeah, it does make Pogrom easier. Plus, also, when you see all your alignments flying up during Pogrom, it suddenly feels real good. This exact encounter happened on my previous run, and he dominated this one because of how many fights they took early on. <sighs> no, oh, didn't mean to pause. That's just a reflex at this point, but yeah, no, Gilbert is gonna lose that town. Crap. Ah, jeez, everything's going to hell. <laughs> Am I gonna lose our six reputation or whatever else for losing that town? But yeah, no, if we get a, like a princess in this team or whatever else, it's just game over for everything they run into. Of course, we can't get one this this uh, this run, so that's nice. You know, little complications and things. All right, we need to get rid of your dog. Dog did a rip. And replenish. Uh, definitely a hellhound. Yeah, about that. Now Gilbert's gonna have to retreat a whole bunch. Man! This is just day and night from last time. And again, that's one of those things I love about this one. It's like every single run's gonna be entirely different. Good. One guy down. They have a chance for a double here. If the attacks go just right. In fact, they might be able to completely take the town if all goes well. Nah, that's going to be way too close. Yeah, they're going to win it, but they still haven't leveled up. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna go recover here. Uh, Doll Wizard Squad over here is gonna go forward. <laughs> Nobody's even tried to take this one this time around. And I guess Warren's gonna be taking his role this time around. Now, for the temples, I understand that they're supposed to be neutral. Like, you don't really gain or lose anything? Alright. And Crank Squad is being attacked again. We're fine, though. Now, do you guys know if there's any plot items related, uh, just kind of sitting around anywhere? As far as random items are concerned? Because that's why I've been going around collecting um, uh, map items and things like that. But I don't think there's actually a use for them in this run. Okay, I just figured if there's any plot-related drops or whatever. And yeah, nobody point out <laughs> that I still have Stick Wizard going on. It's fine. It's fine. He's just Kung Fu Wizard. It's, it's what he does best. He flunked out of magic school. All he knows is how to hit stuff with a stick. Which, by the way, potential future idea for, um, for Lucked PSP, uh, for the vanilla one. Just a uh, melee casters only run. Might be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. 
can't attack anymore. Finish him. Stick Wizard coming in for the kill again. He cannot be stopped. Seriously, this guy's gotten like four kills <laughs> with his frickin' walking stick. It's kind of amazing. This one's going to be a wipe. Or not. It would have been a wipe if she hadn't dodged. Oh, it was almost a wipe. If they decide to attack again, they're, they're just done. there. Since we're almost at that point, uh, since I kind of want to do uh, Deneb's Garden next, what do you guys think? Hire Deneb or no? Or for that matter, could somebody look up where you get the golden bow or whatever item it is you need to... Uh... I think it's a golden bow. Uh, they need to hire her, right? Because don't you get that in two maps from now? Depends on your game end or ending you're going for. I'm not going for any ending in particular. I'm just going for, like, whatever teams are useful right now. What you were thinking here, sir? Just below normal stage? Okay. Or the Norn stage? Gotcha, gotcha. Don't remember how to recruit them either. Yeah, if anyone wants to see particular recruits happen, just mention vaguely how to do it. We'll do it. So useful. Right, that should set up for the ones on the right to go down. Possibly a full wipe, depending on how this goes. Because they should all do about the same amount of damage. Okay. I think he's got two punches left in him. Much punch, and the man cannot stop punching. Freaking Fisto bought 9,000 over there. Alright. So, let's go look through these woods for some neutral werewolves. Not that that really helps us in any particular capacity. Alright, you go this way.
So yeah, usually if there's random enemies appearing, it's gonna be in the forests. Dress up a bit more like I do. <laughs> this guy, man. This guy. Getting bored of watching your ugly face. <laughs> ah, what a good mini boss. It's like, I think this was the bit in my first time through that I was just like, you know what? I freaking love this game. Yeah, he can be pretty dangerous. Uh, Gilbert more or less hard counters everything he does, though. And it's implied that the archers really don't want to be here. They're basically slaves, but... You know... You gotta fight them. I mean, could go for leader only, sure. But then their attack power goes down. And that's not really particularly helpful here. But I think he gets like four attacks or something during the night. <laughs> okay, who do we still have? Basically need to bring everybody in for this. Placement Amazon. Although apparently them things are like, wait, why is that? Why is that a pause? I think hitting triangle out of any menu will, will uh, insta pause it. Now we'll see if we run into a neutral here. I think their encounter rate must be pretty low. I mean, if we don't run into it in the next few seconds, I'm just gonna call it good enough. Because I do have to get wrapping up here. They do nothing on that. Let's see, if he gets uh, the killing blow on that fighter at night, uh, can, he can become a werewolf? Wait, really? Is that actually how that works, or are you joking? Didn't mean to pause there. Although, you know what? I gotta look that up. Let's see here. That's what people say. Let's see if people are right.
Allow Sirius to kill the basic fighter unit before winning the battle. Statistically, there's a 1 out of 8 chance of infection. But apparently, regular werewolves and tigermen have this ability as well. Take them to the temple to have them revived, or use a revive item on the unit. The unit will be revived as a werewolf instead of a fighter. Send an army to travel the countryside. There's a chance they will be randomly attacked by a werewolf. Okay. So yeah, you can just explore the woods here. Well, do it. Want my werewolf, dang it. Yeah, that's a that's a weird weird uh, Easter egg there. You specifically have to sacrifice units to them. It's only best to beat the map than come back and do it after the risk of overtaxing people. True. I think it still technically counts as daytime right now. So you think I've had the death blow werewolf conversation work or conversion work once? I don't believe it. One, of, one out of eight's way, way lower than Like, I think I've also had it work once before. And I couldn't figure out how it worked. Which I guess that's kind of it's supposed to be the thing. Like, you don't know how you got a werewolf, but you got a werewolf. This guy is really, really strong in this form, though. Truth be told, I don't know why you'd ever use the vampire over this, because <laughs> I've gotten one run where I used a vampire, and I was like, it just was such unbelievable hot garbage. It's like, it's the werewolf, except it's worse, and also it sleeps during the day and can't do anything. Gilbert, get in there. Vader, you get in there. Just everybody pile. He's low on health. He's low. Not really. <laughs> Just immediately back up to full. Yeah, this is what all the tarot cards and things like that are. You're supposed to just show up to these fights and just nuke them with cards.
Watching speedruns of this is pretty insane, though. Like, just the, the, the nuts way that they managed to snowball everything. And just basically make a few, uh, few crush squads made out of, uh, out of unique units and stuff like that. Just watch it go completely out of control. It's like going in and wiping entire, uh, entire squads like nothing. Though I guess everyone's kind of had those runs, haven't they? These can do it. Yeah, his archers almost don't even matter here. Thinking about it, a werewolf's like okay. The, the whole mythology of just a werewolf being stronger than a person and whatever else doesn't really make sense. It's like okay, when you take dogs and whatever else, the whole reason that they've got a strong pole is just because they've got twice as many legs going on at one time. So if they're bipedal, they wouldn't necessarily be that much stronger. They wouldn't really have any extra mechanics go point going on. If anything, they just kind of suck in the heat. Funny. Uh, yesterday, uh, we were coming back from a, a short trip we took up to a lake there, and that had uh, taken both dogs, and they're both well, it's a lab and a golden, and had taken them out to uh, to go for a bit of a walk in the sun. It was like a hundred degrees out. I don't know why we were <laughs> we were going for a walk in that weather exactly, but, uh, but you know, like I'm I'm going and you know pouring water bottles on them to give them drinks and whatever else. Still, though, we get to the end of it and they're just pancaked on the ground, just like, no, we can't do this. <laughs> this is not what we do. <laughs> we are way too fluffy for this nonsense. Alright, come on, come on, come on. Crank Squad needs to go in, finish the job. Before we accidentally tax everybody. Yeah, I really, really love how in the PS1 version, uh, all just everyone's got different sprites. It's like all your main characters have different sprites, even. There we go. That's a win. And level ups. <laughs> Alright, so that'll be that then. Sorry, ta sorry, taking a lot more losses on that one. But you know what? Made it. So, gonna be doing Denebs and all that next. Uh, for the moment, though, gonna have to call it. Oh, I'm going back to search for unit? I suppose so. And yes, I know, I should remove everybody else from the team, but. Eh.
Because the idea is if you remove everybody else, you have zero deployment cost, or if you put just a griffin, you've only got a cost of like a couple hundred or something. Now, I forget, does canceling out before the tax period hits actually cause you to not take the uh, take the tax penalty, or does redeploying every time cause worse problems? Do you know? Like, my, if I quit out now, will I still end up losing reputation? I mean, basic trajectory for this run, I want to try and get as decent uh, reputation as possible. But I'm not going to... Like, I'm not going out of my way to reset anything or whatever. One more quick map search, and then if not, we just won't have one. No big whoop. So that's that then. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time then. Uh, see what we end up doing tomorrow. Uh, might be doing more of this. Might be doing that Legend of Mana run. Might be doing some jank Vita ports that I keep talking about. But either way, I'm going to get going. So you guys have a good one. Take care, and I'll see you then.